Hey guys, this is Leon, the Nomad Detailer, and I've got the uh, long-awaited video for you about the Lippert frame brakes. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can get all the updates as they come in. Um, hopefully we're going to hear more about this. So this first video is um, of the Wagner's rig, and I put that in here so I can show you the separation that I saw. Uh, John and Debbie Mills was far worse than this, so which is why I wanted to drop everything. But if you watch here, when it's hooked up to the truck, it's got that huge gap there. And when they take the weight off of uh, the truck with the jacks, you're going to watch this gap close up. Okay, so that's exactly what I saw in the Mills, but far worse. And it's one of the reasons why we started investigating what was going on. And as you can see here, I had plenty of help. We were actually at a DRV rally, um, had over 100 RVs there, and um, John and Debbie were actually hooking up to leave that rally. So we had a lot of people that were standing around watching what was going on. We had plenty of hands when needed. Um, so what we're doing now is we are physically having to remove everything ourselves. Lippert will not remove your shell, will not remove front caps, rear caps, whatever the issue may be. Um, you have to get a technician out there to do that for you in the field. Uh, matter of fact, they, uh, even at the factory when John and Debbie's all patched up here, um, they are only going to temporarily weld it and then we have to put it all back together enough to get it down the road over to Lippert and Hal. So the doors here, we're having to remove them. There's quite a few hidden screws here that are coming from the back. We've got it pop free now. It sticks a little bit here in the front, so we've just about got it worked out, and we're just going to move it over here on the grassy area. And uh, and at this point here, we were being very careful with everything too because we weren't sure if anything was broken yet, if it had to go anywhere, we were going to put it all back together. Yeah, should be. All right, what we really need to do though now is hook it to the truck. We gotta take the weight off of it so we can see if and where it's flexing. It's flexing and where. Because the weld could look tight right now until you hook up and then it separates. Okay. Well, it didn't show up until we actually hitched up and that's when we saw it. That's separate. why I wanna see what it looks like when you're hitched. This ain't going to show us anything right now. So for this is all I found so far. And one of the things I wanted to do here was uh, show you guys the rust. So this shows that um, this ongoing flexing has been going on for quite some time because moisture has been coming in from their trim above, up above. Moisture is getting in here and causing the rust. Now, upon inspection, I didn't see any kind of wood rot or anything like that at this point, which is good. So, but uh, definitely moisture has been in there. And what I want to show you here is where the gusset was at, the aluminum gusset. It just ripped the screws out from all the movement. So all the integrity there is pretty much shot. So uh, that'll have to be fixed. We just had Bruce here from uh, Lippert that came out and started inspecting and everything kind of looked fine. We found a few cracks. So if you look right in this area here, coming down from the front cap, if you'll go right in here. So the, so Bruce found that first, right up, there we go, there. And then over in this side in here, there's another one on the inside weld and then in the same spot on the other side. But we weren't finding any kind of damage that would cause 
what I saw when John was leaving that caused this wall to separate as much as there was. He said that would not cause this. So before Bruce left, you know, this wall's out of shape and form. We showed you that yesterday. But before Bruce left, I had John take everything out of the front corners and Bruce got in here and started looking. And let me show you. So when you come into your basement, right inside the door to the right, you have this main support. I'm going to show you from this angle first. There's your crack there. This is right next to your landing gear ram. Here's your landing gear right behind it. Okay, we're gonna come around. I'm gonna show you a different angle of it. Okay. All right. Now, let's go around to the other side. Well, let me show you from this side here. The brake. Yep. Right there. Okay. Now let's go over here. Now we're going to be right in the hydraulic bay area. And look right there, guys. Now, when the rig was sitting on the jacks, this was closed up and I could barely see a line there. Once John hooked up to the truck, we were able to clearly see the break. Let me get these wires out of here and get a nice good shot. There we go, guys. This is uh, this is pretty bad. This could have ended and ended very badly. So again, look at some of the signs that I sh that I was telling you guys about. I know you guys can't see this stuff here when you're inspecting, but if you start seeing excessive cracks big gaps if you start seeing white if you see white pops up when you are here hitched up you're you've got a lot of movement something's going on here this whole wall here is about to come out about to just rip it out with the screws now Lippert won't touch this until everything's removed so there's the uh, cap under the underneath here so now I'm going to recruit me a helper. Look at that. I'm going to recruit me a helper and we got to remove all of this wall has to be removed and everything has to be tucked away um, before the welders can come out and start working on this. But it's a pretty big job and the mills are going to be sitting here for a little bit guys. So keep them in your prayers and we'll talk to you guys later. Um, when we kind of get this all fixed up and the welders out here, um, we'll, we'll add that too. But I may go ahead and get that out there because I know a lot of you guys are curious of what's going on here. So, Okay guys, now we have Kyle that uh, came over from Lippert Service. And um, he's coming over. He's going to do some uh, stitch welding uh, across the face of that uh, upright. He's going to put in a couple brackets. And uh, the goal here is just to secure it make it strong enough so it can get roughly 40 miles down the road to Howe, Indiana, to the factory, uh, where they're gonna reopen everything up and all the engineers are gonna come over and try and figure out what's going on. So, let's go back and let's look at some photos uh, I took of the crack before, and then I'll show you what the temporary fix looks like, and then uh, at the end there, we'll show you what the permanent fix looks like. So here you can see the crack right below the gusset, uh, goes through the weld and then it goes across the face of the of the upright and then in the next photo you got the same thing showing pretty much the crappy weld I guess um, and all the splatter and everything left on it there's your side view you can clearly see the side bracket there along with uh, the jack where that's welded in I'm not sure if that weakened anything or not maybe overheated so here's the crack where it's sitting on the jacks where the weight's not taken off of it showing you how it closes it right up when you're sitting on your jacks all right so let's look at some of the repairs uh, or the temporary repair that he did so he came in uh, well let's see that's still another picture of the crack closed up there we go so there's the stitch welding that he did uh, that's right there next to the inverter you can see the grounding wire right above the jack uh, bracket 
All right, and then here's a the bracket that he made, bent it on site, kind of welded it in place uh, to keep uh, all the upstairs movement to a minimum as it's going down the road. And he did this to both sides. There's the stitch weld on the other side. And this is just some tube that we took out from the front wall there, just showing you that the three tubes all screwed together is how they do a triple beam. In this case, uh, it looks like four. And then uh, that's where it goes when it's removed. Tape off since it rained last night. And I want to show you guys something. Um, so they are actually hooked up to the truck right now. All right, all the weight is on the pin box and the welds and I can post the, I'll post the pictures also of that, but the little temporary welds that they did back in here. Uh, so that way they can get the unit over to DRV today so they can rip it apart has held and, and incredibly it's held very, very well because I want to show you this. When they were leaving, what I noticed, now imagine there being trim here, but when they were leaving, what I noticed was everything here dropped, this went up, and I could see paint, white line, popping up over the trim. I also saw that all the repair work I did on the other side, when they got here, it was separated, it ripped it all out and yanked everything up, and I could see white line. The half inch to three quarters of an inch told me that there was a serious problem and I advised John and Debbie, let's park this thing and start investigating and looking at it. Bottom line, we'll fast forward all that. We can talk about in the real long video that's coming out um, once everything is said and done and the fix is done and we look at it. But So what I wanna show you right now, some of the changes that we've noticed immediately. I don't even have screws all the way in this thing and already and look, everything is closed up there's no Lexel, nothing in this thing yet, but it has pulled everything back together, closed up. The crack here that was open is now closed. Why he's off of his landing gear. Closed up, closed up. Everything's tied up in here, tight, tight. Look at this. He had a huge separation right here, all closed up. So yes, those brakes on those uprights and that front lane, right behind the front landing gear there, make a huge difference in this all right so let's run around real quick and look at the other side and then they're heading off of the rv this morning now this is just temporary fixed patched same thing guys look at this completely closed up the gap i i don't even see brand new some brand new drvs come out that are this tight up against the wall there's usually a gap here and this thing just sucked right up in there i'm kind of impressed with the the welder kyle from lippert he did burn through a hydraulic line down here but uh very very nice guy he knew what he was doing and he was quick so all right uh, i don't want this video to be long they're going to get down the road but i just want to show you guys how just a little bit of welding what difference it's made now the welding that's been done by no means is enough to hold up over time of traveling. That's why it's just a temporary patch so they can go, what, 20, 25 miles today, so. Okay, and so now here's the final finished photos. And here um, you can see that uh, they've sleeved it, replaced the steel with larger, thicker steel, uh, replaced the gusset, welded everything up. There's another picture. Not the prettiest weld still at the top, but I'm sure it was hard to get to. Um, so it's definitely got a lot more support underneath that gusset there to support that arm. Okay. Well, and then you can see they added another member along the side there to give it even more support. And also, if you'll notice here that they replaced the jacks to a much shorter jack that's the new style and by doing that they do not have to weld that bracket that was in the middle of that upright beam there so i guess the logic there is um, not putting the heat onto that steel there welding that bracket in there um, and also um, it's the newer jacks if you got to rip it all out anyway so 
So to wrap this up, I think that DRV and Lippert as a whole has been very uh, proactive and uh, very um, open to taking care of this issue. Uh, I haven't heard of any negative complaints right now. They've got a pretty good plan in place to get everybody fixed up. Um, looking at the after pictures here, I think they beefed it up quite well. Um, time will tell, of course, and we'll see if that uh, also will uh, stop the, the stress cracks that people have been getting, the um, movement that uh, some people are having, keeping trim on the inside and stuff. So I think it all goes back to this issue here. Um, DRV is not yet or Lippert has yet to release a statement as to what they think uh, is going on here. Um, if I don't really want to get into guessing, I don't even want to do that. So, but anyway, but it looks like the the time frame looks like frames from about 2014 through about 2017 of the frame build, not necessary when your unit was built, but when the frame was built. So get in there, check those out, and then um, if you have an issue, uh, report it to your manufacturer and uh, to Lippert right away. They are aware of it, and they are scheduling people to come in for the repair. So that's it, guys. Hopefully that gives you a good idea. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and what I'll do is I will uh, come back and give you an update if someone ever guys in another video so hit that subscribe button um, so you'll be alerted when that comes out okay this is leon the nomad detailer signing out and uh, we'll see you on another video guys take care